Let's begin by selecting a collection of images in the library module and then scooting over to the develop module. Now the first thing that you might see is down here in the lower right hand corner we've got a little warning that comes up and that's because we've changed the process version between Lightroom 3 and Lightroom 4. For those of you who have been using Lightroom since Lightroom 2, this might look very familiar because we did something very similar between 2 and 3. The difference is, is that between 2 and 3, we were changing things and improving the way that we enhance things like demosaicing and sharpening and noise reduction. In Lightroom 4, we've really made great improvements to the basic panel. So, if I want to change this to the newer process version, and by the way, the only reason that I'm seeing this is because I have already processed this file in Lightroom 3. If I'd never processed a file in Lightroom 3 and I'd only brought it into the Lightroom 4 beta or when we ship the, the Lightroom 4 version, we will not see this warning. So this is only if you've made changes in previous versions and now you're looking at those in Lightroom 4. So, how do I update this process version? There's a variety of different ways. You can do it down here in the camera calibration tab if you want to where it says process. We could uh, change that to the 2012. We could also go here underneath the settings menu and go to process. But really, I think it's much easier if we simply click on the warning. When we click on the warning, we're going to get an option to update well, if we have selected images, it'll say selected photos or all the film, film strip photos or just update this one. And you can review your changes before and after if you want to see what the difference is. But honestly, I just like to hold down the Option key or the Alt key and then just click on the warning and that to me is the easiest way and the most simple way to just update the single image to the new process version. All right, so let's go look at what that's done to my basic panel. You can see here that first off, all of my settings for all of my sliders are set to zero. So that is huge. We had so much feedback from all of you saying that you just want to be able to return to the starting point. And even though you could always return to the starting point in Lightroom 3, the values weren't set at zero, so it was a little bit confusing. So now you'll notice that all of my sliders here set, are set and start off at zero. In addition, We've broken up the histogram into kind of five areas which I think are much more intuitive and easier to use. And in fact, if we position the cursor over the histogram, you'll notice that here on the left hand side I've got my blacks, then we go into the shadow area, then we go up into our exposure area or our mid-tone area, and over here we go to highlights, and then finally we go over to our whites. And we've got those exact same corresponding sliders down here. And another nice thing about these sliders is that they all work the same way. If I drag the exposure to the left, my image gets darker. If I drag it to the right, it gets lighter. It's the same for all of these different sliders. If I take my shadows to the left, my shadows get darker. If I take my shadows to the right, my shadows get lighter. And are you noticing here in this image, because I think this is a great example of the new shadow slider. Now there is no more fill slider and the reason that there isn't is because we received a lot of feedback that said that when you move the fill slider too far over to the right, meaning you were trying to really, really enhance those shadows or see into those shadows. So we were starting to move too much of the histogram, moving some of your mid-tone values. Well, if you were also trying to decrease your highlight values because your original photograph was taken maybe on a contrasty day, you were getting some kind of crossover kind of in those mid-tone areas and it wasn't looking very good. So we've isolated a little bit more tightly what this shadow slider does. So you can see that it's really only affecting the very shadow values of this image. If I wanted to bring down my highlight area, I can do that and you can see there in the edge around the window the change that that is making. If we move a little bit further down and we take a look at the clarity slider, one of the things that I'm really excited about is when you move the clarity slider even all the way over to 100, you'll notice that you don't see that kind of edge halo or artifacting that you see in Lightroom 3. So we're getting all the advantages of getting kind of that mid-tone contrast and really making the appearance of your image look a lot sharper without getting that halo effect. All right, excellent. Let's move to the next image here. And I just want to show you with a few quick changes, I can really make a significant improvement to this image. So for example, I think the shadow areas are a little bit too dark, so I move the shadow slider to the right and we can lighten those up. I also think that maybe my highlights are a little light, so I might bring those down a little bit. I'll bring my clarity up in order to kind of enhance the sharpness of the image, and I'll also bring up my saturation. 
Now, I might be going a little overboard here, but what I wanna show you is that you can really get that kind of faux HDR effect still. In fact, I'm actually getting better results with a single image HDR than I am with multiple exposures. So that's fantastic for me because a lot of times if I have something moving in my image, I'll just wanna take a single exposure as opposed to multiple exposures and I'm getting the results that I want right here. Okay, let's move down to the tone curve. Now, for you advanced users, I think you're gonna be really happy to see that when you're in the point curve, all right, now how did I get here? Because usually the curve looks like this, the tone curve, right? Down here in the lower right, we've got the point curve. If you click on that, look what I have now. I have RGB channels. So I can actually go in, if I only want to affect, for example, the green channel or the blue channel, I can select that and I can make my adjustments here. So if I wanted to kind of warm up the image, I would just bring that blue channel down a little bit. Excellent, let's scroll down a little bit further. And we're gonna go all the way down to lens correction. Now, you'll notice that I've got the enable profile correction turned on. However, right down here, I have a new option to remove chromatic aberration. So that used to be part of the lens correction profile. However, we've improved the internal method for removing the chromatic aberration and we find that we can do it much better on the fly than we ever could with a profile. So by just turning that on, um, let me zoom in here just in case you're not familiar with the chromatic aberration. This is a pretty good example of it here. I think you can see that there's this shift going on. We've got kind of a magenta green shift. If I turn on the remove chromatic aberration, you'll notice that that shift goes away, right? So chromatic aberration, occurs when you photograph with a wide angle lens and the light coming in on the outer areas of the lens isn't quite aligned when it hits the sensor, it's more aligned in the center. So now we can correct that on the fly and we do a beautiful job of that. All right, let's go ahead and zoom back out and let's move to the next image because I wanna show you the improvements that we've made to the localized adjustment tools. So regardless of whether or not you're using the graduated filter or the adjustment brush, you'll notice that now all of these controls match the basic panel. In fact, there's even more because you can now selectively paint in or paint out noise. So this is fantastic because as we use the shadows, as we paint in with the shadows, we can at the same time remove any noise that might be generated. All right, so let's go ahead and make a few quick changes to this. And I did this on purpose. I wanna show you here because I think it could be a little confusing for people. I'm not in the basic panel right now, right? I've clicked on one of these tools. So I'm actually in the, the localized adjustment tool. So just know that they look very similar now because of course all of those settings match, all of the sliders match. All right, so what do I wanna do here? Well, I wanna kinda of boost up my shadows just a little bit. I don't wanna to go too far. Um, I might do this selectively instead of doing a global adjustment here. So I'll just bring up my shadows a little bit. I'm gonna bring down my highlights and watch what happens to this area that's really quite overexposed. As I bring down the highlights, you can see that I can get back the detail in that area. So that's fantastic. Let's go ahead now, grab that adjustment brush and let's start painting with a different color temperature, right? We were unable to do this before. We could pick a color, but then I would have to know the opposite color and kind of pick that and paint with it. And it's not the same thing as actually painting with the temperature or tint slider. So I'll go ahead and kind of guess at first. I know I want this wall over here on the left-hand side to be not so blue, so I'm going to make it warmer by moving the temperature slider to the right. And then I can just paint in. Now, it's not giving me the full effect because my flow is set down, so let's go ahead and increase that. And then we'll just brush out that kind of purple tint or that blue tint, that cool tint from that front wall. And of course, if you don't get the value correct the first time, you can always add or subtract the amount of temperature that you're changing. Now, this still looks a little bit blue back here, but I'm gonna to click to add a new adjustment. I'm gonna take down the temperature just a little bit here. I'm going to take down my flow because now I can be much more accurate. This is much more like kind of dodging and burning where you can increase or decrease the size of your brush and you can paint. Although it doesn't look like I've, I've loaded my, my temperature high enough, so I can always come back here and just increase that later. So a really great way to paint in different color balances. And you can imagine, especially people who photograph portraits where you have a person sitting next to beautiful window light, but maybe you forget to turn off like the interior artificial light. So you get kind of that weird color cast on one side of the person. This is an excellent way to correct it either with the adjustment brush, or of course you could also use the graduated filter and just drag in a gradient.
And finally, I just wanted to show you really quickly, I'll increase my flow here, we'll set the temperature and tint sliders back, but I will increase the shadow slider here, and I'll do it really dramatically to make sure that we can see this. And we'll go ahead and paint here, just kind of dodging in those shadow areas to bring out some detail. Of course, if you don't like what you've done, you can hold down the Option key, and that just toggles you to your eraser tool. But then if we zoom in, you'll notice that as I paint in those shadows, I'm also getting a lot more noise in those really dark areas. So using the same pen that I just painted the shadows, I can go in here and I can increase the amount of noise reduction to get rid of all that extra noise that I just added by increasing those shadows up into more of a mid-tone region. All right, excellent. Two more things that I'll just mention to you, both having to do with presets. When you do save presets in the Lightroom 4 beta or in Lightroom 4, just know that this little option right here to save the process version, although it's not new, it might become much more important as we move forward because of these big changes that we have made in tonality in the basic panel. So just be cognizant that you are able to save your process version. And also you'll notice either in the library module or when you go and import files, when you access all these presets that you've created, we now keep them in those nice tidy little folders. So that's a huge plus for someone like me who uses presets all the time. They would just appear in this huge list alphabetically and it took a long time to find them, but now they're just all folder based. They'll stay in the same folders. These are the same folders that of course you've made in the develop module right right here. So that's a huge improvement. I know it's sometimes it's the small things, but that's going to save me a lot of time. All right, excellent. That is it for the basic panel. We hope to get your feedback on this. So thank you so much for watching.